All right, guys, we got a very special project today. We've got an RC helicopter body that was built by hand in Japan back in the 1970s. It's a Gazelle SA342 quarter scale fuselage from Vario. Now, we had somebody call in and say, hey, you know, I'm a local and I'm helping kids that are disadvantaged to learn different things from manufacturing and RC and aircraft and things of that nature. And we don't have any budget, but we want to get a scan of this so I can help them 3D print uh, the end and eventually the entire model. I've got some other parts uh, back here as well that we're gonna scan for the project. And basically we're like, well, if we can make a video on it and show people, then heck yeah. So here we are today. We've got the fuselage. We're gonna scan it using the Einscan HX here. Now there's a couple things we'll need uh, with the HX in mind. This is a blue laser scanner and a structured light scanner. Today we're gonna use the laser mode, mainly because it picks up points so much faster than all the other scanners at 55 frames per second and several million points per second. So uh, compared to the other ones, we'll just be able to scan the whole thing more quickly and easily uh, and accurately. Then, because we're using laser mode, we will need markers, scanner markers, uh, and we also have these scanner pyramids, which we do include when you buy the HX at visualminer.com, along with this ASUB scanning spray. Now, these we probably won't use today, but the scanning spray we will. Now, let me get into why this is actually a very challenging or a unique challenge for 3D scanning. So we'll notice that it's a totally smooth body. It's epoxy, it's molded, it's very smooth, but it's clear epoxy, so it's transparent. So what I'm seeing when I look at it, just like when the scanner looks at it, is the texture of the fiberglass. <laughs> so I did a couple scans at super high res, and what I was actually picking up was the texture of the fiber glass, like the, 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 the fabric. Um, and I don't want that, I want the smooth surface so we can print it and it's exactly the way it should be, not the internal structure. Um, so we're gonna use the ASUB scanning spray to actually flatten that surface a little bit and then we're gonna scan at a little bit lower resolution, a half a millimeter, still super, super detailed, um, just to smooth out the surface a bit from the initial scan data. Now in testing, half a millimeter was more than enough to pick up these very fine features like the seams and everything, which will probably be removed in the final CAD file, but uh, it's enough detail to really get all these little features like these little vents and these little you know, window ports and things like that. So as opposed, instead of going down to you know, a tenth of a millimeter and getting tons of data and stressing the computer, Scanning at half a millimeter is also gonna allow the computer to process everything more quickly and we're just gonna you know, workflow right through this. So I'm gonna bring in Jay to help me spray this thing down and slap the markers on and then uh, we'll start scanning. All right, so we got it sprayed down and markered up. We went a little crazy on the markers. Usually it doesn't actually need this many, but I wanna make sure it's a good scan the first time around, so I'm just liberal with them. Uh, and as you can tell, the Ace of Blue is already disappearing. Now it's about 85 degrees here in the studio today. Uh, you got a little bit of a breeze going and it's been maybe 15 minutes at the most. So that is where a sub Orange comes in because this stuff lasts 12 to 24 hours. So looking back, I probably would've used this instead, but I've got a trick up my sleeve for this particular body in that if I need to spray more because it's too reflective, I can use a sub transparent, which is just gonna dull the surface and y'all still be able to see the color and whatnot through it, but this will be coming handy because it'll still let me use the markers and it won't cover up the markers with a matte white. So let's get right into scanning. Again, ASUB products all available at visionminer.com slash ASUB. And I'm gonna go into laser mode here on the HX. And I'm just gonna do a quick scan of the whole thing. And then I'll go into here. I'm just gonna go, well, actually I'll use normal mode and then I'll switch halfway through to show you the difference. I'm just gonna hit the preview button. Once I see those markers, it's giving me some data and I'm just gonna start actually picking up the data. Now I'm in normal mode, but if I switch to reflective, it's gonna capture any of those areas that are already losing the A-sub, and it should pick them up just a little bit quicker, and it'll scan faster. Basically, the reflective mode just, it changes the brightness and intensity and how it's interpolating the data and uh, makes it pick up reflections a lot better. You wanna be within a foot and a half 
generally while scanning. So I can actually get down in some of those deep pockets without having to do anything. I'll come around here, being sure not to move the model very much. Don't want to bump into it. Of course, in this case, it wouldn't matter so much because all the markers are actually on the object. So if I did bump it, it should still pick everything up and align properly. Right, let me get this area. Yeah, and that area up front, it just picked up that data, no problem. It doesn't even have any A sub left on it. Now I'm gonna sort of try and trick it and go down inside the part as deep as I can, even though we'll have a couple more angles to pick up all that internal data. All right, there we go. I think I'm good to go on that. So I'm gonna do a quick cutting plane just to get rid of the table. So I'm just gonna use the lasso, select the table, create a cutting plane, fit the point cloud. I've got that, I'll just drag it up there. That gets rid of most of it, hit apply. And then I'm gonna select some of the actual model itself and say connected domain. Now that's gonna show me basically all the surfaces that are together that I scan, all the data I really got. So most of that is great. And we got, because of the reflective nature, you get these little hangers out here, right? So I'm just gonna go invert and then delete everything that wasn't next to that surface. So that's pretty good. We got a little work to do on the inside. Looks like we get a little, got a little bit of stuff here. I'm just gonna lasso that, I'll go like this. Maybe get these ones too. Delete that. And you know, the software would probably get rid of that. I'm gonna bring in Jay to help me spray this thing down and slap the markers on and then uh, we'll start scanning. It's really great when you have somebody uh, hanging around just to hold your scan objects. Definitely helps. I'm gonna get this whole side. Now you'll notice the lasers lines, like you can see those little gaps. And if I hit the little zoom button here, it zooms in my viewing window so I can really see everything that's going on there. And it's funny because some of these markers are not actually getting picked up, but you can see all those little areas where I just need to get a little more. And I'm gonna have Jay slowly rotate the, uh, just the back end. Let me zoom back out a little bit. I'll get the top half. All the way back up here. And the more time I spend on an area, the better the data gets. Easy to see that. Now let's go all the way to the other side. And lift it up a little bit so I don't get the table. Oh yeah, look how fast that's just picking that data right up. This is ridiculous. This is just awesome. All right, right there's good. Okay, now we're running out of markers, so I want uh, put it right here, uh, back that way a little bit, so that I can get, yeah, perfect, up a little bit. Sweet. All right, as long as I can keep three markers in view, in full view, then I'll be able to get the data I need. Managing distance, always important. It's getting a little too close there, as you could tell by the data indicator on the left side of the screen. Okay, I'm gonna get this top section a little bit more. Looks like I'm still missing a little bit of data up there, so let me give it a spritz. I'm gonna point it at the ceiling, spritz it. And now you can see it's lagging a little bit, probably because the spray was just still on top of the, uh, on top of the markers there. So it's not getting as good of reflections off of it. Oh, and for those of you that don't know, these markers are like super highly reflective. Uh, some people call them retro reflective, but that's something to consider. They're not just white dots. They are a, that, the kind of thing that you see in street signs where it reflects straight back at you. Oh yeah, that's looking great. That is looking great. And again there, it looks like it's missing, but it's not. I'm gonna do another final project group, getting data. There we go. Get some of that data on the back wall through the windows. It's working. So there's that tiny little corner back there that I'm getting right now that I'm just gonna keep sort of massaging around that area 
to see if I can get that corner of data points. It's, all, it's sort of like a paintbrush. You know, you just keep going on an area that's difficult to reach uh, until you get it. All right, let's see how that did. Okay, you can see it picked up the, uh, picked up the mouse there pretty good. So I'm gonna do another cutting plane. I'm going to get rid of this. And then I'm just gonna select uh, part of that, do connected domain, invert and delete. Okay, generate point clouds. All right, there we go. So I got a bunch of this data in here. I got a little more sidewall data on the inside and that should be good to go. So I'm just gonna make sure it's aligned with the rest of the project. And also we see that and I'll go markers, apply. And here we go. Here, as we can see, it should be more than enough to reverse engineer and turn this into an actual CAD model for 3D printing. Okay, so as soon as this meshes, we're really gonna see the detail of our STL and like how many of these little tiny features it got. And uh, I recorded some screen recordings earlier. So first you can see the 0.1 millimeter resolution. Um, as you can see, you can really tell that this was the fiberglass texture getting picked up and not uh, really the outer surface of the smooth epoxy. Uh, really, really detailed. And here, I did a 0 0.05 millimeter scan, and it's just insane detail. Like, really, really detailed. So if you need to get textures or things like that, the HX is really, really good for that. But this is why we scanned at half a millimeter, because we still got a ton of data. Now, as you can see, the texture of that fiberglass is still causing some interesting stuff uh, to go on in the mesh here. Uh, we don't really want that. Technically, it doesn't matter because this is getting redesigned in CAD, but I can do different things with the filters. I could set this to medium or high and smoothing, and that will smooth it out a lot more. But we want to keep our data like the way we received it, the way we got it, the way we picked it up. So I'm going to actually go no filter, and we are going to still fill the holes and everything else like that and confirm and then play around with these settings until you get really where you want. And there is also a secondary menu. If I wanted to make this low poly or just simplify it, I can simplify it. It's right here. We got a 333 megabyte STL. That's a big STL. But if I want to just simplify, it tells me exactly how big. I can get that down to three megs uh, and it'll be a nice low poly version. You can do that right here in the software. Mesh optimization, I'm actually going to do this one as well. It's kind of like smoothing, but it makes all the triangles a lot more even. So you don't have one really long you know, triangle and then a bunch of little ones grouped up. It just evens everything out. You've got smoothing, you've got uh, small floating ports, hole filling, automatic or manual. Uh, you can flip all the normals, uh, use the cutting plane tool here, or you can mirror stuff. So there's a little bit you can do in here. So I'm just gonna run the uh, mess optimization around 40. Hit apply and see what that looks like. But other than that, if you got questions or wanna know more about this, leave it down in the comments below. Uh, we love hearing from you guys and really appreciate all your comments and everybody's following. Uh, if you want to buy an HX or some scanning spray, works with all the different 3D scanners and it's literally a lifesaver. Changes the game. It's awesome. You can go to visionminer.com slash ASUB or slash scanners, but we got it all here. If you're into 3D printers, you want a scanner, some spray, a 3D printer, uh, and the whole works. We're here to figure out what the right options are for your business as opposed to just sell you something. We specialize in high temp thermoplastics. So with that all said, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.